This is Ruud. Hello. What are you going to teach us today? I'm going to teach you today how to make your own paint. And I'm going to do it in exactly the same way as Rembrandt did. Paint is made of pigment and all the pigments that Rembrandt used all come from nature. For instance, black. How do you make black in those days? Black is by burning bones. And when you burn a bone, you get bone black. Then for using the blue, Rembrandt used this. And this is something very special. Look at this. This is glass, and this glass you find in caves somewhere in Germany. With this I can't make any paint yet. Put it in here and then stamp on it, so it became powder. And that powder is called smalt. And it, it was quite expensive, but it was not that expensive as something blue as this. And this is called ultramarine. And ultramarine was made of these precious stones and those precious stones you only find in one mountain in Afghanistan. You would pay for one kilo of this perfectly ultramarine, you would pay 25,000 euros. So what Rembrandt did, he thought, okay, it's nice, it's a nice blue, but it's a bit too expensive. He uses this smalt, which was expensive also, this costs nowadays 5,000 euros a kilo, so still very expensive but less expensive as the ultramarine. The only thing is, when you use smalt as blue, it disappears. It disappears and becomes gray after a hundred years. So when we look at paintings of Rembrandt nowadays, we hardly see any blue. The other very nice color is this red. This red is made of lice. And these lies, you find them only in Mexico, they live on a cactus. And when I crush a few of those, it's used in lipstick, in M&M's, in, in, in Fristi, in, in uh, pancakes, in whatever. Oops, there goes the lies. And when you put a little water on top of it, Look at this, what a beautiful red. So you might think of it, this is blood. It isn't blood, it's called carmine. And there are a lot of pigments and they all come from stones like this one. It's an ochre stone, stones, you crush them again and you get this beautiful color of ochre, which you see over here. But with those stones, and pigments, you still haven't got any paint. Now I'm going to show you two ways of making paint. We start with making egg tempera with the egg. What I'm going to do, at first I'll take some pigment. And because I want to make an under painting, the first layer in a painting, it has to dry up very quickly, I use Almost the same color as, as Rembrandt always did. Uh, this is made of clay. This is made of clay, just uh, you find it everywhere. So it's organic. Just to show you how you do that. I take some of this red earth. We take some water. And the water I'll do in the little hole. And now I'm gonna mix it and very carefully because when, it's, when you do it too wild, everything becomes red and brown except where you want it. Okay, a bit more. And I mix it just until I get the right texture. And the right texture is almost the same like toothpaste. So, and what you might think, you think, okay, with this I could paint already. But the moment it dries up, 
it will become powder again, so it will fall off. So you need something to glue it. We don't need the whole egg. We only need the yellow of the egg. And I throw the whole yellow of the egg on my bare hand. This is the funny part. Now, what I do now, you see the egg is still wet and shiny. Now I put it on my other hand. Clean up this hand again, and it goes back to this hand. I'll make my hand dry, because every time you have to make sure that one hand is dry, so again, again, and you see it becomes less shiny already. So it becomes more firm because what I need is only the yellow which is inside of this egg. I'll take the egg now with three fingers because I only need the yellow inside. I'm getting, gonna take this little knife, pinch it, and bloop, there it is. I take a little bit of water, a little bit, pssst, not too much. Now I'm gonna stir it. And what I do, I put just as much egg with this pigment and water as I have on the glass plate. So this is the same portion, one on one. Now I'm gonna stir it again. And incredibly enough, at this moment, I made the best paint in the world. This is so strong, it won't vanish. It's very strong. And I always thought that it's gonna, it's gonna stink, but it, it, it isn't. Okay, egg tempera. Look at this. You can use just water. And this is for you if you want to make a painting. You start with an underlayer. To start with tempera is very clever because it dries up very quickly. You can do this with all kinds of pigments. So make your own tempera. Uh, try out different colors, uh, different pigments, uh, you can do whatever you like. Now we're gonna make oil paint. And that's a little bit more difficult. We start with the same thing again. But now I'm just for fun, I'm gonna take the, this, this is vermilion. It's uh, actually, it was made of mercury and, uh, and an acid. And now what I use, I'm not using egg anymore, but I'm gonna use linseed. And linseed oil is also, it's organic. You can use it, I think, even in the salad. But now we're gonna use it to make paint. Do it very carefully because I don't want it too much in the beginning. So the best thing is to make a little hole in it again. Boop, hot signals. Mixing it is not enough because the little particles of the pigment will uh, dilute a little bit in the, in the oil. You have to grind it. For grinding, I use a thing like this. You can, I also have bigger ones for bigger heaps of, uh, of oil paint, but this is a little bit just to show you. So I'm going to keep that clean. Now I'm going to grind it. And you have to imagine that in the studios of Rembrandt, and actually in the studio of every painter in those times, a lot of kids were doing this. Because if you wanted to become a painter, you first, the first 10 years or so, you had to do nothing else as grind and make paint and that sort of thing. So look at this fantastic familiar. And to test if it's good, when I 
do this, it has to, yeah, it keeps standing. You see, it doesn't fall over again. I'm going to show you how you can paint with it because I can paint with this, but it stays it's thick. When, when I use it here, you see it, it's kind of stiff. And that's okay, yeah, because it's all oil paint, so I can make it very thick. But just to show you, but what I always use, and it's very handy, I give you my own recipe. One third linseed oil, two thirds of turpentine, just mix it a bit. Okay, now I'm gonna use this. Now you see, I can paint. So this is, you see, it's, it's totally different as the tempera. And that's what Rembrandt did. He made his underpainting in oil. And he uses, not this red, but he uses the brown colors, the earth colors, because those are the cheapest. Oil paint. And when you compare those, this is already dry at this moment. That went quick. Actually, these are already two of the colors that Rembrandt used. Okay, Ruud, what's next? It was a little bit messy, so I cleaned up now. I'm going to make the, the palette. All the colors that, uh, that Rembrandt used. And I give you one tip also, because by putting up the colors on your palette, you have to do it in a certain order, because if you go, you, you, if you use too much uh, warm colors uh, next to very cold colors, you get mud. Okay, I'll start with white over here. Uh, normally, uh, Rembrandt used lead white, but lead white is very poisonous, so it's forbidden. Black, bone black made of burned bones. I put it over here. So I keep them separate, so they don't mix. Shenna, natural shenna. And it's made of, of stone, of clay and stone, grinded stone. And it's a very nice color, which I am gonna put over here. Next to shenna, I'll do ochre. And you see, it's almost similar, but it's a little bit lighter. Umber, and you see it's a sort of greenish brown. Castle earth, and it comes from castle, and it's very dark, it's dark brown. You see, matter, deep matter, and this is very beautiful. This is a very deep, Red, carmine red, and this is made of the, the little uh, lice. Even more red, and it's also very transparent. This is vermilion, you see, wow, it's a sort of orange red, nickel titanium yellow. Plop, ultramarine, look at this, it's very dark blue. And then last but but not least, uh, Rembrandt uses azurite, and it's very hard to get. But nowadays we have this grayish blue, and it's almost the same. You see? Okay. What we see in this palais of Rembrandt, this is the palais of Rembrandt. There's no green. How come? That's because of Rembrandt made the green himself by using yellow combined with a little bit of blue and you get green. And of course you can make it even more green by using this and that. But when I for instance, when I use a little bit of red around it, you will see that this becomes more green 
because of the color this is what she's standing next to it. I'll show you. This is the grayish blue. Azurite. This is what Rembrandt used. That's one. This is ultramarine. Blue. This is what he used. Yellow. And you know by painting with oil paint, you can make it thick and it becomes slightly different. You can make it thin. Here we are. The king of all colors. Vermilion. Wow. Carmine, made of lice. Look at this. Very nice. Matter. Made of root. You see? Earth from Castle. This is also a nice glazing. You see, it's almost black. When you look at the paintings of Rembrandt, it's so wonderful that he, with just these few colors, he could all could make all kinds of colors in between and whatever. So that's the thing you should experiment with. This Omber. Omber also made of clay. Ochre. Ochre is always, this is quite a, kind of funny, it's more a thick paint, it's more opaque. When I mix this with a, with a sort of red or with carmine, or when I mix this with blue, it becomes greenish. All kinds of variants. Shenna. Also an earthly color, Shina. Looks like ochre, but it isn't. You see, it's also opaque. And of course you can make it thin again. Last but not least, black. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna paint half of it black, bone black. You see, wow. You can make a sort of gray when you make it thin until black. And then I start the other half with white. And what we do now is, and you don't see anything, 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 anything. And now it becomes gray. You see, gray. Rembrandt was famous in the later years of painting very thick. And when you think of the Jewish bride, for instance, the sleeve of Isaac, it's very thick. And he did it with a palais knife. So just to show you, eh, to become a little, of, uh, a little bit more Rembrandtesque, um, you should try out painting also, not only with a brush, but also with a palais knife. I need paint, I need a lot of paint. Of course, because when you paint thick, don't be cheap. Get the paint and I start. This paint will dry up in such a shape also. So you can use that. It's called impasto. So you can do it thick, thin, and you can mix things also. So for instance, here, you see, here, zap and try out things. Use this, make some green, hop! You see, this is vermilion. One lick of vermilion and your eye gets attracted to this red. Because what Rembrandt did, he didn't only paint with this and this, but he also painted with the back of his brush. And by drawing in it, mm 
you what shall we do Whoop. okay paint with thick paint and paint with thin paint at the same time Ruth, thank you very much for this lesson you've been a delight thank you and uh, i'll hope you uh, have fun painting in the way and with the colors that Raymond used. <laughs>